Hi, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to do something a bit different. Uh, I'm going to share with you a video that I originally recorded for uh, my Enlisted account and something I wasn't going to share because it wasn't really meant for public audiences. It was really just designed to uh, show the creator of a program all the ways in which I would try to break it and so that uh, you'd understand ways in which to make it better. Uh, because what I'm using is a beta uh, release right now. It is not available to the public. Uh, by the time you end this video, unless you watch it you know, three months from now, you're probably not going to be able to buy it, or at least not uh, in any particular uh, non-public way. Um, if you're on somebody's email list, like the makers of this program, for example, then you probably have access to it. But otherwise, um, I'm, right, I'm basically I recorded a video to a program you can't use yet. Um, so that's one reason why I wanted to keep it hidden. But um, the, in, the end result was actually pretty good enough that I think you guys would learn something from it if I were to publish it officially. So I figured, let me go ahead and if nothing else, you guys can see what's coming um, and then you can decide you know, now if it's something you want to look into when it comes out more officially in the next couple of months or so. Uh, but the program's called Quick Write and it is an AI writing assistant. And we'll take a quick look. You can see I've already uh, clicked on the fiction button there because that's what I write. I write in fiction. Um, the, the program, by the way, works uh, the same whether you use fiction or nonfiction. It's just the sales page changes depending on uh, what your market is. But anyway, um, you can see this is the beta page. This is this price here is not permanent. It's only for uh, those who are on the email list to Adazing uh, or any other affiliates. Adazing um, would be the same people who brought mock-up shots, which I also did a video on um, sometime last year. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, go ahead and do that. Um, but anyway, this is a um, essentially it's a writing tool uh, that helps writers uh, start their work faster. It gives them prompts, ideas, and essentially um, you can even give them outlines, uh, regardless of whether they're fiction writers, uh, nonfiction bloggers, uh, people who are just looking to you know, post a tweet, whatever the case may be. And so, it's um, the design is very much like Jasper. If you're familiar with Jasper AI where it's an AI writer that comes with prompts and you put in the prompt you want, generate the content, and it spits out this you know, block of text and then you can decide whether you want to keep it by um, exporting it over to this page over here. And of course, if you like the export, you can save it. It's really that simple, not very complicated. Um, this video that I'm going to show you guys here in a minute uh, was my first impression of the program. Let me just start by saying I was skeptical going into it. I bought the program um, really just to see if it's something that would help me with research uh, because right now I'm I got plenty of ideas in my head I really don't need AI assistance for uh, coming up with ideas uh, the only place where I might struggle would be like second act you know scenes which is something I think I would probably get out of this but ultimately I, I really just bought it to test it and to see if it's something that I would use at all and I went in expecting it to kind of suck if I'm being honest um, because some of the videos I've seen um, others uh, make on this program I wasn't that impressed with it uh, and also know from just you know exploring the AI generation um, you know market for the last year to see what's out there I really haven't been that impressed with most of the outputs so what I've discovered it really comes down to the way you input you know your output is as good as your input so if you get crappy results you probably gave it a crappy prompt honestly um, but that said um, I wanted to test it and you know see if my skepticism held up or if it was challenging. It was actually it turned out to be challenging. This thing turned out to be a lot better than I expected it to be. So um, that's kind of the preview here, and then ultimately why I want to show you the video I, I created, uh, what I made essentially for the creator of the program. But before I do all that, I just the other reason why I want to kind of put this um, this kind of header video in front of the main video because uh, a I, again I, I didn't set it up to show with you guys but the other thing too is I, I do want to address the elephant in the room it's probably more like two elephants in the room and that's chat GPT um, you may be asking why would you need something like this now that we have chat GPT so in fairness um, this the original uh, test for this product came out in November around Black Friday that as far as I know which was also about when chat GPT came out so I'm sure the creator of this program uh, was well in development long before chat GPT became popular so you know it's just unfortunate timing i think is really the case here with that but the other thing to remember is that ChatGPT is uh, it's built on natural language um it's it's built on follow-up questions it's built on you know finding exactly what you want by asking question after question after question which in my opinion is useful i think ChatGPT is a really 
uh, useful program. And I think that's something that we definitely want to be able to hold on to. But the things to remember about ChatGPT is that it's not designed specifically for writers. It's designed for people looking for answers. So like if you're looking for research, like I, I mean, again, I bought this for research. I probably should have just stuck with ChatGPT, although let's be honest, I haven't actually taken an account for it yet. Um, and if research is all you want, I probably would just go with ChatGPT, honestly. It's it's because you can get anything you want out of that, especially if you keep asking the right questions. But here's the, the kind of caveat here. Uh, right now, um, everyone and their mother, father, grandpa, cat, and uncle, they're all using ChatGPT right now, which means that ChatGPT is off and down. If you want a more consistent uh, uh, experience with ChatGPT, you have to buy it. You know, I think it's $20 a month right now. Um, now, to be fair, this is going to, I think, retail for 30 a month once it officially uh, breaks um, the public barrier, or once it finally comes out of beta. I mean, if you do the math, like ChatGPT is still more affordable and probably ultimately better for that. But the thing that you may want to remember too is honestly, it, it could, comes down to just storage. Um, with a program like this, I mean, you, you're going to export it into um, your own document that you can keep refine and, and basically do all the things that you would do in Jasper. So ChatGPT, I don't think has that function. I think it's just gives you information. Uh, so it kind of points you in the direction of where you want to go. Um, now, again, I'm not familiar enough with the, uh, the archiving features of ChatGPT uh, to make a, a full-on comparison between the two. I, I would say that ultimately, if you're wondering which one to go with, um, I would say why not do both? Uh, because again, this one is designed for um, giving you ideas that are it's strictly tailored or strictly trained rather to help you with your author authorial needs. Um, whereas with ChatGPT, it's more general use, uh, and again, that's assuming you can you can actually get a result. You know, when it's not overcrowded with um, system errors and all the usual things. Um, anyway, pros and cons. Um, I just you, at the end of the day, you can decide what you want. If you want this, or if you want ChatGPT, or both, or neither. Maybe you hate AI and wish it would just go back into the hole it came out of. But I want to give you guys a fair look at this thing, and then you can decide whether or not it's something you want down the road, if it's something that will be useful to you. Um, and again, this is a beta program. This is not available as of this recording, uh, unless you're on the email list of this person advertising it. Uh, and again, that's a dazing, A D A Z I N G, if you are interested in that um although according to the clock it doesn't look like uh, you have much time so you may have to wait anyway um but the other thing i want to say is that um this video will be broken in two parts part one is the original and first impression part two is going to be just a quick follow-up just some things i thought of after i had finished the video that um, i just think it's more useful to remember if you want good uh results uh, or in, in the case of the creator, to give the author an opportunity to produce good results. So um, you don't need to watch part two unless you want to really go into the um, you know, my impressions of AI and all that stuff. But if you just want the first impression of this video or this program, then part one's all you need. So just bear that in mind going in. So we'll go ahead and get started and then um, come back at the other side um, probably an hour from now. Uh, get your coffee if you haven't already because you know that my short videos are not short. So, all right. Hi there, this is Jeremy and I just want to do a quick video test of QuickWrite, a uh, program that I've been seeing advertised in my email for the last couple of weeks, actually since uh, Black Friday. Uh, it's an AI program uh, for uh, writers, essentially. It's uh, one of many that I've seen, but um, I thought I'd give this one a try since it's tailored for writers, specifically fiction and nonfiction not just uh, bloggers. Um, I did see some videos, just kind of full disclosure, um, before buying this. I didn't know if I wanted to spend $200 on it, even if it's for a lifetime, just because I've seen um, a lot of AI writers already that kind of do similar things. And I have one called Akoya, which is actually a social media scheduler, but it has a lot of the same type of, uh, of content as far as like AI goes. So I was a little skeptical of picking this up, but I thought, well, you know, it's $200. Um, I mean, it's worth trying for something that reasonable. Uh, so the other thing I was thinking is after watching the videos, um, I kind of get an idea of what is behind the scenes on this. And I thought it'd be good to 
essentially try to break it. And I don't mean break it like, you know, not be able to use it, but to actually see what its limits are and where it can be improved. Because I know ultimately uh, CJ, who I guess is the creator of this, would like to know how he can improve this program. So I'm basically doing this video uh, for CJ for ideas in which to not only see how um, writers may use the program in action, but the ways in which it might frustrate the writer, um, ways in which it may feel limited, uh, and all that. So this is really not about uh, you know trying to find all the things that I love about it, uh, but intentionally looking for the ways in which I would want to see it better, be better. And so that's what this is going to be about. Um, as you can see, I haven't really done anything yet. I did watch uh, a couple videos on the sales page, and then uh, of course I looked at the academy and saw it's the same videos. So I only watched about half of it. Uh, just that's kind of my basic background here, but I do think uh, it'll be worth it to do a fresh start. Um, again, I kind of know what's going on based off of what I've seen. I know if you create a project here or there, I'm getting the same output. So we'll go ahead and do that just to kind of test it. Um, the main thing that I can say just from what I've seen in the uh, other videos and reviews is that the um, for fiction... What I'd like to see is I'd like to see something more nuanced. Um, so like right here, let's say if I go into plot suggestions. Um, actually, let's do a quick check to see if anything is new here. Um, yeah, all right. So let's if I go into plot suggestions here. Um, what, I, what I honestly would like to see is more than one field. Um, so there, I know there's a program I have called Riku AI where you can customize your own AI uh, templates. You know, I, mean, I try to do one for like an AI uh, NPC text generator, which I, I don't know. I don't know if I ever got to work well, but some this is not really my space for doing, uh, you know, magic with. But uh, one thing I do know is you can customize what kind of fields you use in that particular program, and I imagine it's probably the same here. Um, and I would love to see more than one field for generating plot suggestions. Um, if you look at, for example, I'm going to go to a program I have for AI art. This, I actually have a few of them, but there's one called Super Machine I particularly like. Uh, you'll see that you have a section for model des descriptions and then um, some negatives and then you know the image size and all that. And one thing you'll see is that by adding detailed descriptions, not just what you want to see, but extra uh, components, and then usually like you'll see the different fields like inspired by or in the style of. Um, you'll see things like trending on ArcStation. Um, you know, close-up angle shot, all those, you know, I, sometimes you'll see like uh, types of cameras in here. The more specific um, you get with your descriptions, the better your output. And I know based off of what I've seen in the videos here, they didn't really, the people demonstrating didn't give the best examples. So like if I do, um, for example, uh, um, cat meets a pig for dinner, I'm going to assume it's going to be a, a kid's book, but it could also be a George Orwellian type of animal farm. This particular prompt alone won't give me what I definitely want. So I'm going to do three things. I'm going to generate this as is, and then I'm going to try to generate with genre. And I just want to see if it, if it changes the output. So we'll do that. Um, hopefully it'll work. Okay, there we go. So cat. Oh. I should probably should have said a cat. Cat is a successful businesswoman who travels the world. Okay, fine, we'll go with it. Cat is a successful businesswoman who travels the world for work. One evening, while in a familiar city, she decides to eat at a small restaurant. That's why she finds the only diner in the restaurant is a pig. After some initial apprehension, Cat uh, decides to strike up a conversation with the pig. She's crazy. To her surprise, the pig is quite intelligent and articulate because he talks apparently. The two have a pleasant conversation as they enjoy their meal. In the end, Cat discovers that the pig is a professor at the local. University and is on the sabbatical. Where is he teaching? Like uh, farmer, you? Cat uh, is amazed, inspired by the pig's drive, and like the two become fast friends. Um, so she's a woman, he's a pig, and they become friends. Okay, got it. So if I, or actually, no, I think I can do this. Okay. So we're gonna hold on to that for a minute, and I want to try. All right, we'll we'll go with cat as a woman rather than a actual cat. Um, in a whimsical children's story about sharing. Okay, so let's 
do that. Let's see what we get. So I'm adding an extra parameter in here to see if my output will become more targeted. And the reason why I'm doing this is I want to see if it's if it makes more sense to have an extra field for genre or tone, um, you know, goal, uh, rather than just have it all uh, stuck on one line. Cat and pig have been oh, so pig's a person now. Okay, oh, still going. All right. Cat and Pig have been friends for years, but they have never actually met in person. One day, Cat decides to throw a dinner party, celebrate the friendship, and invites Pig to her, be her special guest. When Pig arrives, Cat is very excited to finally meet her friend, show her around. Cat takes Pig on a tour of the city, introducing her to all the different sights, sounds, and smells. They stop for a picnic lunch in the park and tell her the stories about their lives. Sounds a lot of fun, I guess. The two friends soon realize that they have a lot of similarities and differences. They discover they both love to eat, explore, and have fun. I do all that, too. I uh, but Pig prefers to stay close to home while Cat loves to travel. By the end of the night, Cat and Pig have formed an even stronger bond. So part ways, Pig promises to come back for another dinner soon. The story ends with Cat and Pig continuing to be great friends. The story... See, um... Alright, it looks like I'm out of... Right here. I think I ran out of credits. Um, and each... Each what? Oh. Each other's differences can bring people closer together. We've got it. Okay. So I guess it needs to uh, be able to reach the bottom there. Um, we got to do a separation. And separation. So now I want to try one more thing, and then I'll kind of make my point here. Cat needs pig for dinner and a frightening tale about... Cat needs pig for he needs a pig for dinner and a frightening tale about. Let's see. Um, should I say frightening tale about sharing? You know what? We're gonna keep the, the sharing part of it. I don't want to say something gross. Uh, I want to do something uh, something that the engine can use a little more openly. Anyway, the keyword here is frightening. I want to make sure that the story reflects the word frightening. Now, I don't know if it's going to do that. That's one thing I noticed about AI, anything. Is sometimes it just misses the keyword that you want. I know the art programs do that. Like, I, you know, incessantly try to get a penguin to hold a, a, a bottle of, uh, or a cocktail of some sort. And what I end up getting is, um, not cruise ships on fire, it's something else. Um, I get things like this, <laughs> people holding penguins. Um, so it's not always perfect. But I'm, so I wouldn't expect this to necessarily do exactly what I want, but I do want to, oh yeah, see, here we go. Cat and pig are two and like, oh, it's the one. All right, so I see evil forces, so that's, Okay, so Cat and Pig are two unlikely friends who live in the same neighborhood. They've been exchanging smiles and friendly nods for years, but never had the chance to actually meet in person. One night, Cat receives an invitation to dinner at Pig's house. Cat is excited to only meet Pig in person, but is also a bit scared. After all, Cat has never met a pig before. When Cat arrives at Pig's house, they have a wonderful dinner, and both of them share stories of their lives. They, why do they always do this? Uh, as they talk, Cat slowly discovers that Pig is hiding a huge secret. He is a fugitive from a terrible crime. All right, now that's interesting. Uh, pig confides in Cat and tells her all about his past. And Cat is aghast to learn what Pig has been through. Um, the next day, Cat and Pig decide to join forces and fight against evil forces that have been hunting Pig for years. That's a fast friendship. Uh, together, they embark on a dangerous journey to bring justice to Pig's oppressors. Um, well, if he... Prester, well, if he's accused of the crime, I'm not sure how that's going to go. Along the way, Cat and Pig go bluster and learn trust and rely lying on each other. The end cat and pig succeed in their mission. Well, that's good to know. Let's go ahead and move over so I can see the rest of this. Uh, let's see. Um, together they embark on a dangerous journey to bring justice to pigs oppressors along the way. Cat and pig grow closer and more trust. See, there's all these happy endings. Um, in the end, cat and pig just succeed in their mission. Despite the frightening beginning, their friendship is ultimately strengthened by their sheer experience and their willingness to fight for what is right. So one thing I noticed in all three cases is, and this is also what I saw in the videos that I've been watching, is there's a there's a glut of really happy, I mean, like saccharine happy endings and happy, you know, and happy moments. The conflicts that are in there, um, they're not always like, you know, necessarily 
um, raw or gritty or anything like that. I mean, and that's fine. It doesn't have to be. Um, but I think I, the way this would be useful for any writer is to make sure that the engine understands tone, genre, um, that it's not just always producing what basically amounts to be a kid story. Uh, now I'm sure I'm probably making it, so it sounds like one. If I do, um, if I, let's do something else. Let's say Bill um, is a police officer who discovers a missing a human foot in a cardboard box um, in this gritty drama or gritty thriller about um, politics. Okay. So this obviously should be a, a tenser synopsis, right? Or a, a t much tenser plot suggestion. And actually, I'm going to go one more uh, in this gritty three-act thriller. Okay. Because I'm going to take the prompt from the five-act play from the video. So this is a pretty descriptive text. I want to, now hopefully what I get here is something that meets that quality. So let's find out. I guess I gotta wait a minute for it to generate. Um, okay. All right, something in justice. All right, act one, Bill is a police officer working in a city plagued with crime and corruption. He comes across a cardboard box in the back alley of a shady neighborhood and this will probably discover a foot inside. Why is he opening the box? That's the only need to know. Uh, Bill re realizes the foot belongs to a high-profile political figure. Now, remember, like this is the turn. So is is the foot the plot point? I'm guessing. Bill realizes that the foot belongs to a high-profile political figure who had gone missing weeks prior. He investigates further and discovers a web of political intrigue, bribery, and murder. He is determined to bring justice to the people responsible. Who are they? Who are the people? Um, Bill confronts the powerful politicians and takes them to court. Oh, so he's okay. He exposed the corruption. Well, how is he doing it if he's if he's just a cop? He's not a lawyer. He exposes the corruption and the jury f finds him guilty. So right here, I can see that the system already forgot that he's a cop, not a lawyer. Uh, he exposes the corruption and the jury finds him guilty. The people of the city are finally able to stand up for justice and bail. But what happens? Who does the foot belong to? Um, these are things I'm like I would want to know more about now maybe I have to be the one to figure that out and that's possible um, oh wait, I got to close this up here oops All right, so it somehow got cut off here so and that's something I know all AI programs do that's not quick rights problem that's something that just AI in general doesn't get right sometimes, so I'm not worried about that. A few of the flaws here just in the output, and again, I mean, I know this is not designed to do my work, this is designed to give me ideas, so I can probably just take act one and ditch the rest. Um, and I may, you know, rewrite, you know, actually, that's not a bad idea. Um, here, let's do this, let's save it. Save document, um, or to, can I keep, well, I'm gonna try something here. I'm going to save the document, keep my output, but then I want to see if I can move within the project. All right, so I can have that. Um, keep it in fiction. Now, what I want to do is I want to rewrite an existing book description. All right, so, I want, so rather than. Let me actually do this. Let's do the whole thing. But what I want to do is I want to be able to tell the engine exactly what I want to rewrite. Um, so I have a feeling it's just going to spin the text. It's not going to give me anything useful here. Um, rewrite the consistency. Bill is a police officer. See, th this is where I'd rather have a field that tells the engine what I want it to do. Like, not just not that I want to rewrite per se, but that I want it rewritten in a certain way to account for 
the things that are messed up. So we write for consistency. Bill is a police officer, not a lawyer. Um, you would uh, let me know who the foot belongs to so that I can figure out who put it there, who put it in the box. Okay, so I feel like that's important to know, right? So if I generate content, so I have a feeling it's just gonna rewrite this part plus the X and it's not gonna really give me anything. And again, not quick writes fall, it's just that's the way a lot of these things tend to go. So I wanna see if there's a way to get around it. Because again, one of the things I like about the graphics programs is they now have, they have these uh, features where you can do in painting and you can retrain the image to do a different internal image based off of what you mask. Uh, and it'd be nice to have something similar in the writing space where you can target particular uh, items that you want, not only to re rewrite or redo, but you can give instructions on the way in which you want it to, to do that. Um, now, I, I can probably cheat and probably run it through the, um, the idea section again, and then just retrain the idea um, for like a plot, you know, a, a midpoint or something like that. It's probably the, the, the likeliest way in which this would work. Um, but that's also a lot of um, kind of problem solving that I'm doing in the front end. And so, I, again, it, if, if we're going to make this a good program, then that's what I want to see. Is I want to see the ability to um, have some context and meaning between what I'm doing. All right, I don't know. Is this, did I generate? Is this working? that ever went through. Um, oh, you're thinking. It's, it's um, all right, let me see if it's generated and just doesn't show. Move contact. No. Right, it doesn't look like the rewriting is actually doing anything. All right, so, so much for that. Um, Let's see. So let's go back to the plot suggestions. And rather than, all right, so the rewriting seems to be stuck. So we're not going to worry about that right now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to re re rewrite Act 2. Um, oh, it did tell me who the political, or who the foot belonged to. Got it. Um, Actually, now that I'm looking at this again, I probably did give me all that I need. But this should be in the setup, though. So let's actually, rather than rewrite Act One or Act Two, let's rewrite Act One. Copy. All right. Um, all right. The Elizabeth police officer discovers a human foot in a cardboard box. Foot. The, the discovery should be the inciting incident. Right, let's just clarify that. Let's see if I get a different output based off of the inciting incident there. Hopefully it, I haven't broken it already. Okay, so it's definitely a lot more detail. Oh, it's so much more detail. Okay, this seems to be a better output just based off of the... Okay. Bill is a police officer who is investigating a series of mysterious packages being dropped off in random places around the city. For receiving a tip from a concerned citizen, Bill investigates the cardboard box that was left in the alleyway when Bill discovered a foot inside. The discovery shocks Bill. Okay, good. It's giving me more content. 
The Discovery shocks Bill and sends him on a mission to figure out why the package was sent and who the foot belongs to. He soon discovered political conspiracy that goes all the way to the mayor's office. Okay. And learns that the foot belongs to a woman who is researching. Oh, okay. Now it's getting better. He's researching a series of political scandals that the mayor was involved in. Okay. Poor woman. Sorry about that. Uh, I promise it's fiction. Uh, Bill continues to investigate the political conspiracy and discovers that the mayor is trying to cover up his involvement in a series of shady deals. He also discovers that the woman's death is not an accident. Oh, she's, so she didn't. She is dead. Okay. Because it would be worse if she were still alive. Uh, he also he just discovers the woman's death was not an accident, but was actually the target of assassination. Bill finds himself in a dangerous situation as he is targeted by the mayor's henchmen and nearly escapes several attempts in his life and continues to investigate the case. And she discovers evidence linking the mayor to the mur one's murder, but he is unable to prove it in court. Bill is determined to bring the mayor to justice and he works with his local journalist to expose the truth in Act 3. That's a little late. The journalist published a series of articles about the mayor's shady dealings, which leads to public outcry. Uh, the mayor is soon arrested and brought to trial. At the trial, Bill presents the evidence linking the mayor to the woman's murder. The jury finds him guilty. I would probably say this in the Act 3, not this. Um, well, that's okay. I can, I can move it. Bill presents the evidence linking the mayor to the woman's murder, and the jury finds him guilty. The mayor is in his life in prison. Bill is held So, um, that, that was a much better output. Actually, that one I legit liked. So, we're going to move that over. Um, I mean, I'm not going to use it. I have too much else going on. But I like the idea that uh, it actually is a little more intelligent in how to create the, um, the plan. Um, so obviously there's some things I'd move. Like I'd move this to Act Two. Um, I probably wouldn't have the woman be dead. I'd probably have her limping around somewhere, just because I, I like to write quirky uh, fiction. Um, but that could be part of the scandal. Is maybe he's trying to figure out if she is dead, uh, and then the big twist is that she's not. Uh, so that's something I would probably know. Let's see. Actually, a little note here. Note. The woman is actually alive in the second act twist is that the is that Bill finds her. Okay. Alright. Um, this gives him the ammunition to take down the mayor who doesn't realize she's alive and in hiding. Okay. All right, and I'm going to put a little asterisk. Let's see. Um, uh, let's say human. Um, let's say my note. That way I know it's me and not the, not the AI. Okay. Uh, so basically what I'm, I'm discovering here is what I suspected it would be just with the way AI works is you can get better output by doing better descriptions. So you kind of have to know something uh, to just give a basic overview. You're going to probably get something either generic or kind of dull. Um, that's one of the things I noticed in all the videos I've been watching is a lot of the outputs uh, were essentially just kind of, you know, sugary, not you know very interesting. But yeah, and somehow everyone ends up as friends. I don't know why that's such a, um, a happy thing to go on in. You know all these different um, tests, but uh, I, I personally I just I think the best way to make this uh, particular product really work well for writers is either to um, train some suggestions um, for more detailed output. Like if I do, uh, actually I better save this in case the example. Okay. I don't want to lose. This is actually I kind of like this. I don't want to lose it. Um, if the um, I, was, I was just seeing if they're actually telling me examples here. Um, yeah, if there's like some uh, prompts or anything that would kind of help the writer along, um, that would be good. I know again, a lot of the image generators they will have prompt hierarchy so that in order to get the best image, you can you know tell the the engine specifically what it is you're looking for when it comes to, like shots and all that. Um, and actually, while we're talking about imaging, I know this one has a, an imaging section. Let's check that out real quick. Uh, we'll call this one Cats, Pigs, and Bills. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead and go to... Can we click on the quill to go back? I can't. No, I just, I just called it. So 
entitled. It's cats. Did it save my. Okay, good. Again, it's not entitled. It is called cats, um, pigs, and bills. Now if I go back to the quill, okay. all right, cats, pigs, and bills. Um, so I know there's something in here for the imaging. Let's just do a quick test of that. Um, put AI image. Now obviously this is not going to be as sophisticated as the um, AI images that are dedicated for imaging, but it would be kind of interesting to see what it can come up with. So let's do a picture of, I want to do a picture of a cat. Let's do a picture of uh, cat, um, cat, uh, blonde woman with ambitions for um, restaurant, restaurant, um, dining, and friendship. Also, heat and something. Sitting at a table in her favorite diner. Okay. HD, 8K, uh, hyper real mistake. See what we get. That's enough stuff there. Let's see how sophisticated this part program is. Um, <laughs> this is probably going to show give you a picture of a cat. <laughs> a cat with blonde hair. Let's see. I, I might have broken it already. I don't know if it likes all of that extra content I gave it. Um, yeah, is anything that tells me it's working would be useful. I don't know if it's actually doing anything. Um, are you creating? I hope you're creating. What does it say? Cat for that. Okay. Right, I don't know if it likes all that content. Oh, there she is. Oh. She does like all the things I said. Nice. All right, so that's our hero cat. Um, I'm gonna move it over to the content editor, and I'm gonna save your document. It's actually a pretty good output. I, I'm. That's yeah. But but again, it's clear you gotta be. Uh, you gotta say exactly what you want. Uh, I, yeah, that's I like that actually. I'm gonna save that. All right, so overall, I mean, my impressions of this are pretty good. Um, I was hoping to break it, and I mean, I found a few things where it could be improved, but. Um, it's, much better off than I was expecting. So, uh, you know, score one for crushing my skepticism. Um, now, obviously, I didn't go into like all the things, like the social media and all that stuff. Um, but this might be kind of nice to to use for, um, you know. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to see if this, if I can use this for research. What I'm probably going to do for research. I'm guessing is either use the. Um, let's see. What, should I do nonfiction? Um, create a chapter outline. I guess I could probably mess with that. I'm probably not going to do that on camera because I, I, I'm sure I have to use a system of either creating like a nonfiction project or going into the power editor. Um, which honestly, I'd rather use the power editor because this is the one thing that nobody in the um, on the videos could get right. So I want to see if I can use it. Um, so like, you know, f uh, find the information about the typical journalists or television journalists. And this is actually a legit question I have because I have a character who's a television journalist and I have no idea what her day should be like on an average. 
Um, it's been a while since I've last researched this. Find me information about the typical television journalist and how she spends her day from the number of hours she works to when she often wakes up and goes to bed to her meals and her typical assignment to, to if she's a puff piece reporter. Okay. Alright, so let's see if that finds me anything of use. Alright, I'm gonna end the video off of this generation because I want I, this is a legit question I have. Um Clearly, I'm looking for information. I'm looking for research. I'm hoping that this will help me. Uh, if not, then what I'd suggest to you is, is um, you know, some kind of, of prompt for actually research questions. Um, so I'm hoping this is like actual content and not just fiction. Let's see. So let me go ahead and move this to the editor. That. Typical television journalist typically works an eight-hour day through through for live broadcasts. Okay, uh, the hours may be longer. A typical day for a television journalist might start at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. in the morning. Newspapers and latest news headlines. She would then head to the newsroom to assess the day's stories at 8 a.m. She would start a live broadcast. It would take up to an hour at 8 a.m. Okay. Uh, after the broadcast is complete, she would then meet with the production team to discuss future stories. 10 a.m. she'd be out in the field reporting on the day's stories, which could include interviewing people, doing press conferences. Um, let's see. So she's not on, in front of the camera. Um, she is out and about, I guess. Okay. Uh, which include interviewing people on some press conferences, doing research on short scripts. She typically return to the newsroom by lunchtime to review the day's news and write her scripts. At 2 p.m. journalists would then begin editing her script. Now... What I, I guess my question here, and again, this is just something I have to research extra, is what, how does she start a live broadcast if she doesn't have anything yet? Because down here it looks like she's still figuring out what she's going to report on. Uh, okay, by 4 p.m. the show would be ready for airing. Um, after the show is complete, journalists will typically do follow-up research. Okay, you know, the journalist... Uh, we had time to look at the overnight news and plan the next day's stories. She would then typically finish her work day. Meals of a television journal depend on individual. She would she plan to have healthy breakfast before her shift, light lunch, okay, and nutrition. Uh, including covering local elements, okay. See, uh, this is, sounds about right. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this one's okay. Uh, I'm gonna say journalist day. Anyway, so I have to probably look into that more, um, dig deeper like a journalist would. But anyway, I just I was curious. That's the main reason why I wanted to check out this program is mainly for the research. I don't really need to have new ideas. I feel like I've got enough already that I'm working with, um, and I'm really stuck for ideas and to move forward. Maybe like an act two would be a good time to use something like this. Uh, so that's where I'd probably I'd, I think I'd, r I'd rather have like scene generators than plot generators. So that's something I would I would maybe consider um, in addition. Uh, which again, I can probably use the um, the power editor in order to figure that out as, as well. So th there, I'm sure there's ways to use this um, in order to uh, trick the system into doing what I want without actually having to give me more prompts. But as usual, you know, the purpose of having programs like this is to help the the writer get to the point quicker and faster. Because if it's quick write, then I want to get to the point as quickly as I can, and which means I want to be able to use the prompts that are there uh, in an intelligent way and not have to necessarily problem solve my own prompts in order to figure out where I'm going. Um, without the, you know, and, and when I say that, obviously there's gonna be some problem solving because not every generation is gonna be great. Uh, so, some, you know, just like in, in photo editing, you have to continuously tweak the prompt until you get what you're looking for. And I'm sure it's gonna be the same here as well. But um, minimizing the effort I have to do in order to get there. So just last point, um, so I, if I go back to, um, let's do this other art program I have called art, um, actually I don't have, I'm not logged in, so maybe I won't use that one. Um, 
basically there's like you can there's ways in which you can advance style in some of these programs uh, the one I was just looking at ArtSmart actually is nice because it gives you um, the ability to select whether or not you, what kind of angle you want, what kind of uh, focus you want, uh, whether you want hyper-realistic or, or um, semi-realistic or whatever. So it, it embeds the um, the styles into the program. So it, it really all it's doing is just copying and pasting uh, a prompt into the, the description. But the by having the drop-downs, it, it helps you as the artist um, visualize what you want rather than have to describe it and so I think something like that would be useful for a program like this where you know the prompts um, are there to help the writer save time um, as much as the engine itself is designed to save time so you know you know let me choose a genre through a drop down let me choose the tone through a drop down uh, maybe I can identify the character like if I, if I know uh, who the character is maybe that should be a separate uh, drop down and then the plot would be, um, let's say, journalist discovers blah blah blah, and then the main character would be Bill, and the engine would assume that Bill and the journalist are the same person. Not sure how that would work. That might take some um, uh, more training, uh, and it might be complicated. I don't know, but that's just you know for something like this to really work well, uh, I think that the best plan would be to have as many uh, prompts going into the generation as possible in order to simplify the. The, um, the process of getting an output and, and creating the best possible output for the situation that we can get. Otherwise, you're going to have writers who are just going to type in things like um, story about a boy and his toy. And it's going to be something as generic as that, and what they're going to get is something that is probably going to be good and sugary, childish. His name is Timmy and Mr. Cuddles. At least they gave me a name. That's nice. Um, magical portal opens. Actually, <laughs> that turned out pretty good, too. All right. Um... Right, did I save this already? Uh, that's fine. We'll just, I'm not sure if there's an easy way to go from document to document, so I'm just going to put Timmy Mr. Cuddles down here with the journalist. Maybe they can somehow be in the same content. Um, Yeah, I was expecting something kind of lame, but actually that's not too bad. But and it's good that my skepticism is being challenged. Um, that makes it all the better. All right, we'll go ahead and save it. And that's all I'm going to do for now. I just, again, I wanted to um, kind of see if I could break this thing. Um, but yeah, overall pretty good so far. Um, I think, yeah, I think I would, uh, I'd say this one's worth it. Um, and I, you know, I haven't done any of the other stuff yet, but that's pretty good. Anyway, all right, that's all uh, I'm going to do for this video. I'll continue to mess around with this program more, see if there's other things I can suggest. But really, that's what it comes down to is just um, good training of um, through prompting um, and a way to make sure writers have an option to target what they want, especially if, you know, if we're not looking for kind of macro ideas, more like, you know, scene ideas. Uh, maybe we got the the plot in mind. We were just we're having trouble figuring out the details. Uh, something like that would be useful, I think. Um, and again, I haven't dealt with any of the nonfiction stuff. I don't write nonfiction. I don't care about it. Um, but for the fiction, I, I certainly want to see um, more. Um, I guess more funneling of, of targeted ideas in particular. Oh, and the other thing too, um, I, I forgot it in this part is any time there's like a, a marketing thing like a blurb or anything like that uh it would be nice if this were trained on the um the actual like let's see let me find one um that's not what i want to go back to fiction book description okay yeah let me just turn on the thing um I'm actually going to do my actual book here. Let's see if I'm giving a better prompt here. 
Mr. Michaels. see if how closely this comes to what really happens. Uh, no, not for a few years, just for one year. When his strange wife escapes from the and makes her way home, she tracks it down, the Ryan was confirmed his past, his secrets, and people who stay at home with him for years, confirmed to turn his name. Uh, he's not interested in that. She is, or anything from his tear in part. Um, pretty close, actually. That's not, not a bad... It's not a bad assessment of the story. Um, basically, again, this is where it would be nice to see genre-specific um, content. So, in this domestic thriller about the past colliding. See what happens with it. It's just him. There's <laughs> no family, it's just him. Yeah, this is definitely not it. I'm gonna save it anyway because I, I don't delete anything. I, there should be a way just to save outputs without having to do this, but it's okay. Um, like, I basically, I'd want one output for things I'd like to keep and then others for just, you know, backup copies. Um, things I may not necessarily, you know, use now, but I might save for later. Um, this is definitely not the story, but I appreciate the effort. Anyway, the point I was making is, is I want to make sure that it follows like good, you know, practices, uh, formats, things like that. Um, and of course, you know, as always, I have to tweak the thing to make sure it fits the story. Um, but, you know, as many prompts that I can go into, or even the ability to add prompts that might be useful, um, instead of using a short phrase, maybe do something like what they do with AI, where you can just tack on additional phrases and, and let the engine try to train itself to figure out what you're trying to say, um, including, like, antagonist, you know, mentions, um, and, and whatever the real conflicts are. Um, like, you know, thematically, uh, this is about a man who... Um, he was responsible for putting her there, essentially. Uh, like, she's actually saying he just misinterpreted what she's about. Um, and so he kind of miscalled her mentality and, you know, and he, and he essentially sucker punched her by putting her in. And so her getting out is not about, you know, it's meant to be tense, but the reality is she's the one trying to fix the family, not him. Um, so it's sort of like a reversal, but the the... I wouldn't know that for this, this blurb, but I would want to be able to train the blurb in order to come up with something that would allow that to um, happen. And it may be the, just the way I, I write the description, but essentially like any kind of prompt hierarchy that would allow me to be able to get the thing to spit out of um, a paragraph or, or four paragraphs that would essentially reveal that type of development would be useful, I think. Anyhow, anyway, I meant to end this a while back, but um, I just figured I would, you know, really push this thing to its limit um, to see what it could do. Um, that that's it. Uh, that's all I'm going to do for now. But a pretty good program overall. Um, I, you know, I'll use it. I use it for things um, where I get stuck. I'm probably going to use it for for scenes in particular because, again, plot lines. I'm not having, I'm not don't have that much trouble coming up with plot ideas, but coming up with what to happen, like you know, in the middle of Act Two, definitely has issues. So this might be good for that. 
anyway um this is uh if cj's watching this thank you for making this um thank you for you know allowing riders to use it um in the trial period uh hope it goes well so i don't know why this i guess this doesn't give me more words it's all right anyway that's it i'm gonna end the video here So I wanted to go ahead and do a quick follow-up video to yesterday's first impression um, just regarding the state of AI, but also just some additional ideas that uh, the creator of QuickWrite may want to consider when updating the app to be more friendly uh, for users of all types. And I wanted to do that through um, showing you an interface with ArtSmart, which I actually uh, was going to show you guys on my previous video, but because I wasn't logged in, I didn't get that far. Uh, but I figured now I'll go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So if I go into the playground right now, um, you'll see essentially an idea of what I consider good user interface. You'll notice the first thing here is that the box is bigger. Um, the one thing that I find annoying about most AI writers or AI anything is these single, like, you know, tiny, like, single line description boxes. It's very difficult to figure out what you're writing if you can't actually see the length. Uh, so I would re I definitely recommend that QuickWrite or any other you know creative writing program out there that involves description-based uh, generation has a box that's you know it doesn't have to be this large it just, but it should be larger than one line maybe even adjustable I think yeah you can adjust the size of this one so I would highly recommend that that way uh, we we can see in real time what we're writing um, but I just also want to note too. Um, I had mentioned that there are some presets that this particular program did to make generation a bit easier. You notice that what they have here is they have these different modes, like semi-realistic, hyper-realistic, uh, which I prefer that one because you just get good uh, generation. But if you do um, something like, uh, let's see, boat riding on the lava wave. Actually, let's be specific. Let's try to be as specific as you can. Speedboat riding on a lava wave on a sunny day in Hawaii uh, with a beach background. Okay, and then we'll just do all the uh, usual. For now, I'm going to actually leave that blank because the whole point of doing this is to go into the presets and all the different things so right here you'll see i have a few different things i can choose as a preset that it'll actually choose to uh, enhance my description based on my preset so right now i'm going to just do uh maybe we'll try landscape i think would be good so what this is going to do here is it's going to give me um some extra in or pieces of information in my description in order to enhance whatever photo I'm going to create. Now, I don't know why it's going to add birds in the sky, but we're going to go with it. Um, I'm not going to be too picky because, again, this is just a thing we're going to do. Um, and one thing I notice is that you can add a preset, which it tells me you can probably customize your description and then add that according to your preset. Um, if I go into Explorer, uh, that's Community. I don't need that. Um, if I go into Camera Angles, then I can begin to show... Uh, the different types of angles that I want to use, uh, whether it's like close up on faces or landscapes, whatever, uh, or you can just go with none. But let's say if I want, um, you know, a medium full shot, then it's going to, by looking at this uh, graphic, I can decide what my I want my image to look like, and then it's going to translate the description over here. And the same thing with shot focus. If I want to, you know, have some kind of interesting. Um, like not I, soft focus, I wouldn't do that, but maybe something like deep focus, uh, this will change the look of the image based off of that focus, but it's gonna give me the right description to put into the prompt based on what I select here. And then of course I have angles. Um, I kind of prefer, I think, um, yeah, I think my favorite is the eye level shot. So if I go with that, that's going to also add it. Now, obviously, I don't have to do any of this. I can just type in my description and let it do what it's going to do. But it does help me figure out what specific my uh, instructions my the computer should figure out when it generates my image. Uh, same thing in painting styles. And uh, if I want the cartoon illustration, I want hyper realistic because I've already selected it in my main thing. So there's no point in 
um, doing anything out of the ordinary there. Artists would be like inspirational uh, people. I'm not going to create anything based on artists because I don't. I want a, a picture, not a painting. Then additional things include trending 4K res or 8K. Just go with 8K. 8K is you know it's not my to read again. So down here I have um, I can select the width um, because I'm doing a landscape shop. I want a, a larger width with a slightly um, taller oops i actually got that backwards so i want wide and tall and then of course i go into the advanced what's nice about this is this also gives me um, a step prompt now i think this is more um in the line of graphics rather than in um like I, I don't think all generations do this i think this is more of a graphic thing because of the way the graphics are produced it's based off of inspiration so it uh, it generates according to how many times it it, it reimagines the image. And so we'll do 50. I think 50 is a good number. 100 is better. 150 is the max. Uh, but I'm also charged credits depending on how many uh, I use. And of course, eight would be you know how close it gets to the prompt. Then you have the, your negatives. I just copy. This is the um, AI Smart's original prompt. I just copy this into Super Machine. If you're paying attention, you would have seen the same um, you know negative. Uh, words in my sort of machine negatives just because I you know I don't want six fingers on people um, but the other thing that's interesting and this is the other reason why I wanted to come here uh, or one of the art programs rather than go right back to um, quick write is this idea of seeds if you're not familiar with how with a, a seed works or what the purpose of a seed um, in programming there's nothing truly random like like just because it says random doesn't mean you're going to get a random generation. Um, everything is actually repeatable um, if you go by seeds. So right now I'm on a random seed, but if I click that off, then I'm going to actually get to type in a, a seed number that I want. Now I'm going to leave it on random for now. Um, so I'm going to generate this, but then I'll show you what I'm talking about when I regenerate. So we'll do one generation here just to see what this ends up looking like. And then we're going to do it again, uh, but I'm going to change the, um, the value of the seed. So... Um, the important thing with that is like if you get like seeds that are close in number then you're going to probably have a very similar result or if you keep the same seed but if you change a word in your prompt then you're going to get a very similar but slightly different image all right so this is my picture I, you can see volcano in the background uh it didn't exactly give me a boat on lava um so that's something i may want to retrain but i do like the image it's pretty good um, and I don't think that's like anything you would find in real life. So it looks pretty generated. But you'll notice that there's a seed down here. Now, if I copy the seed, okay, I copy, and then I turn off the random. Okay, and then I uh, put the same seed in again and generate. I'm going to get the same image. Just to make my point. And the reason why I want to show this, because again, when we're looking at, um, at any kind of writing prompt, um, I think the best way we can tailor our descriptions is through the ability to just change a few words or change a few uh, parameters, but keep the same general trained ending. And that, because again, everyone says that um, AI, it's like a unique generation every time. That's actually not true. Um, oh, well, in this case it is, okay. See, this is what happens when I speak before I generate. Um, that should have given me something completely different. Uh, let me try one more time. Let's see if it gives me something else. Because that, that, if that, if it gave me that, then that's a fail. Um, sorry, I, I thought for sure that. Although that's a really cool picture, I've gotta admit. Um, I can subscribe and never mind. Um, let's say like and subscribe, and maybe I'll send you this picture. But no. Um, Let's, I don't know. I mean, let's see. Maybe it'll give me a different result after all. It should give me the same if it's the same number. All right. Now, okay, there it is. Yeah, that's the original. Remember, I, I generated that before. So I think what happened is I think it gave me a random, and then it's gave me the original again. So it does, does prove my point that the seeds do matter. Now, if I change the number here, then I'm going to get a different result. Okay, uh, but probably similar to this. The other thing we'll do is, is on the same seed number i'm going to change a word and then you see how again it's similar but different uh like it might give me the same mountain or, but a different uh wave in the in the image something like that uh but 10 is going to give me a different picture but again 
not terribly unlike this one, I think. If it's if it works anything like it does, no, it's very different. Okay, but you know what? I actually I like this image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this image as our base, but we're going to just change one word. So instead of a speedboat, it's now going to be. Um, let's see. Actually, no. We're gonna do. Yeah. We're gonna do. So fast boat. And let's see if that gives me something similar, but a little bit different. And then ultimately, you'll find that uh, it probably is very similar, um, but also very different. And by the way, I don't know if you can hear a bunch of clacking in the background. I know I got a lot of collateral noise. Uh, there is a dryer going off, and whatever it's drying it happens to have metal in it. So if you're hearing some weird knocking, that's what you're listening to. Yeah, so, so you can see it's the same background, but it's a different picture. And so I did that by changing um, the word, but I kept the seed. And so the seed is going to give me some very similar uh, construction with a few moderations to it. So I did all that to prove a point that um, AI is not as random as you think it is. It can be reproduced if you know the seed numbers. And what I would suggest for quick write is, or any writing program for that matter, because this is the one thing I don't think any of them do, is give producible seeds. Like in other words, allow us to be able to, to save and copy the seed so that we can get similar results with, with a few variations, uh, rather than getting some wildly different prompt and all together, or, or wildly different result. Because sometimes we don't want different results. Sometimes we just, we want something that's like what we got, but it, what we might want something tweaked a bit, just for additional inspiration. Now, you know, in fairness, like if we're really good imagination makers, then we don't need to do that. We can probably take the base prompt and then tweak it however we want. But it might be that we're struggling with, let's say, uh, which animal to choose. Do we want a dog or a cat? Or do we want a pig or a penguin? You know, what is it that we want to go there? We may want to variate some very small details with the basic structure just so um, it generates a, a different type of, of thinking. So again, you can always just go the long way and, and just reproduce a new prompt according to um, very specific parameters, which would you know, mean recreating an entirely different generation. But sometimes we just, we want to, to fine-tune things down to what we're looking for and so we can use that to be the thing we save so um, my additional suggestions on top of what I talked about yesterday would be um, larger description windows that um, we can see exactly what we're writing and gives us more room to fine-tune what we're looking for uh, prompts that you know help us drill down our questions to be a little bit more chat GPT like because one of the appeals to chat GPT is of course the ability to follow up questions um, rather than having to continuously uh, regenerate new prompts based on you know in the bubble moments having something that allows context from uh, what we originally produced to what we get in follow-up would be nice now I'm not sure that's possible on in a system like quick write because again quick write is trained on more of the older kind of Jasper style model as far as I can tell by the uh, the UI so I, that may not be possible but again if it is it would be nice um, but the other things too is just you know giving us access to make reproducible prompts with slightly different variations would also be good and then of course you know having the ability to uh, train our, our descriptions based off of things like genre, um, tone, uh, length of story. You know, is it a short story or a novel? Uh, does it require you know three acts, five acts, seven acts? Um, I mean, we could even probably go one step further and, and you know see if there's like story models that might model. Now that gets a little diceier because that's where um, I know Plotter um, has to uh, get permission to use certain uh, story outlines in its program in order to work. Quick Write may have to have the same you know, uh, limits. Uh, other than that, I may want to just, you know, say, you know, in the style of Dan Harmon's Story Circle and then have it spit out an outline based on that. So uh, it, it may be that we just need to know our, you know, our way around the, the outline culture. But, um, but th these are some things that are on my mind uh, regarding AI, uh, AI writing, Quick Write, um, you know, of course, we got our, our bonus AI graphics, and I've just been researching um, last night. Apparently, music is coming now. 
So I discovered this thing called Synth Wave or uh, Stream Tonics, Synthesizer 5. Um, I really want to get this thing. Um, I'm not going to do a video on that, but it basically it can uh, use an actual trained human singing singing voice in a DAW. DAW. Um, and sorry, it's slow because I got all this stuff happening at once. But um, yeah, if you like, if you listen to the song, like it's an actual singer um, lends her voice out to this AI program, and you can create songs using her voice. Uh, not just her. There's like a bunch of different voices you can use. Um, but that's kind of the future where we are with AI. So that's like your little bonus here. Uh, if you stuck to the end of this video, um, really interesting stuff. I do want to look into this sometime in the next. You know, if not the next couple of days, at least in the next couple of months. Um, but anyway, that's what's going on. Um, this is these are my suggestions for improving the program. Once again, if you got this far and you're still watching, uh, let me know what you think of Quick Write. Let, you know, if the creator happens to be watching, you know, let him know. Um, you know, leave your comments and all that stuff. Um, just again, this is not a, a review, so I mean, I don't want to necessarily find out that oh this review sucked it's not a review it's a first impression so um just bear that in mind uh, sometimes the video is not meant to you know go over every single component sometimes it's just you know showing you what i've experienced and that happens to be the case here so um before you make your comment just bear that in mind this was not an official you know review review, yeah, review of every prompt available it's just you know there to you know let me see if i can break it and uh, so far, I've had a hard time breaking it. So that's good news for QuickWrite. Uh, bad news is ChatGPT is still a thing, and it will probably be an upward climb from here on out. But hopefully, um, there's some things in place to help combat that and still be uh, make it a marketable system that's more than just a skin for uh, writers wanting some help. That it can actually be a full-on service program, uh, an AI assistant. Uh, that really does consider the writer's needs and the various forms in which writers may want to uh, tap into. So, um, so that's all for today. Um, no more parts. <laughs> so don't forget to like, subscribe, do all things YouTubers tell you to do. Um, and again, just uh, let me know what else you want to find out more about. If do you want more videos on this program? Do you want to see me go through a um, you know develop a storyline through this? Although I kind of already did. Um, yeah, just leave me a comment and uh, we'll go from there. And um, just keep your eye out for um, the program um, for Quick Write. If you forgot already, it's this here. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it. There was, um, well, no, it's in my uh, video. It, it, there, if you skip my intro, there is uh, pictures. Um, very similar to what we saw in uh, the AI art program. Anyhow, um, that's all. So thanks for watching. Come back for the next one. If you're wondering why I haven't done my uh, writer's bookshelf, uh, I just fell behind. You know, I, I meant to get a couple out in February, and I, I just didn't do it. So it, it's coming. Don't worry. It'll be here soon. All right, thanks. Bye.